Hola, hola. Buenas noches. ¿Se escucha bien? ¿Sí? Bueno, buenas noches a todos. Bienvenidos nuevamente a un evento del Centro de Estudios de Arquitectura Contemporánea, el CEAC, de la Escuela de Arquitectura y Estudios Urbanos de la Universidad Torcuato de Itela. Hoy vamos a escuchar una conferencia de Pierre Alain Trevelo del estudio parisino TBK. La conferencia va a ser en inglés, así que voy a cambiar de idioma en honor a nuestro invitado. We are very happy to have you with us, uh, Pierre. Um, I just want to do a quick comment before handing the microphone to Daria Grashinsky, teacher of the school, who will be presenting our guest tonight. This is an important event for us at the school. It marks the start of a collaboration with the Institut Francais and the French Embassy in Buenos Aires, entitled Redescripción y Reorganización. The agenda of this cycle is to expand the conversations and arguments of the school. Um, in this case, we will be working with the arguments and the problematics of the thesis studio led by Sebastián Adamo and Marcelo Feiden in order to use the SEAC as an experimental space to broaden the discussion and to bring in new actors. It is also an important event for us because this collaboration um, with France is part of our interest, in, our interest in inserting architecture inside the cultural agenda or the cultural landscape of Buenos Aires. This is a two-way street in a way. We want to expand the audience and the collaboration of the SEAC with architecture. And at the same time, we want to bring new actors Uh, to our discipline. In this way, uh, I'm sure you'll have a poster of our activities. It's also available online. Um, we've had some other conferences around this topic by the Swiss photographer Gian Paolo Minelli a couple of weeks ago that will be available online next week. I'm by the art historian um, Catalina Fara. The next events of this cycle will be the conference of the Office Plan Comun, uh, led by Felipe de Ferrari and Nisima Inaguer, um, which will be in October. We will also have in the same month the presentation of NP2F, uh, with the presence of Nicolas Guerin and Paul Metro de Ballon. And at the end of November, uh, Catherine Mosbach, a uh, French landscape architect, will be joining us. Um, It also marks the end of the activities of the SEAC, where we'll take a break of two weeks because of exams. So we will see each other for the conference of Karen QV, which will be uh, yeah, next uh, Monday 26 in around three weeks. Um, now I would like to present briefly Dario Grashinsky, who is a teacher of the school. Uh, he's an architect graduated from the Universidad of Buenos Aires. He's an adjoint professor of the thesis studio. He will be presenting uh, Piralen and speaking a little bit more about the cycle we have been working. Thank you, Dario. Uh, thank you, Javi. Well, I have to do this in English to make it easy. Um, buenas noches, good evening. Tonight, we host the first lecture of a new cycle organized by the SEAC, the Center for Studies of Contemporary Architecture. This series of encounters is titled, titled Redescripción y Reorganización, Redescription and Reorganization, a homonymous name of the course we are currently developing in the school thesis. With many of the professors and especially with many of the students here present. From its early title, the program proposes to avoid starting from scratch uh, and joining a pre-existing conversation about possible intersections between the challenges of urban life and the opportunities of peace heritage. To add new voices to the conversation, we are pleased to feature three French offices uh, truly experimented on the matter. With the support of the Embassy of France, we will receive TBK, Plan Commun, and MP12, 
emblematic practices of the French school who pick up many of the ideas of economy of resources and special uh, generosity of Lagaton Basal and who nowadays write their own chapter. In the first of these lectures, we will listen to Pierre Alain Trevolo from uh, TVK, an international architecture and urban design office founded in Paris in 2003 with his partner Antoine Vigarcoller. Pierre Alain graduated from the Col d'Architecture de la Ville et de Territoire in Marne la Vallée, where he later teach, and he holds a master's degree in urban design from Harvard University. He has been a guest critic and lecturer at numerous schools of architecture and institutions in France and abroad, including EPFL, ETSAV, Mendricio, Hochschule Bremen, and the Col Nationale Superior d'Architecture de Marseille and Nantes. TVK is probably best known for winning the competition for the regeneration of the Place of the Republic in Paris in 2013, an urban project that has become a worldwide model for public space interventions. Earlier today, Pierre Alain told us that the project was partially inspired by a text written by Susana Torre, an Argentinian architect and scholar uh, about Plaza de Mayo, and we talk about the joint tradition between Paris and Buenos Aires of civic demonstrations in public spaces. The project deployed the largest pedestrian square in Paris, but possibly its main virtue is to exceed the sphere of architects and planners, placing itself in a wider cultural agenda and doing so reverberating in public opinion. Learning from positive experience of urban regeneration like Place de la Republique, it's vital to the thesis studio we imagine, where we should surpass our niche and present a project free from, from voluntarism and arbitrariety a project as an articulator of different actors shaping life in the city with a strong sense of opportunity. But the work of TVK doesn't limit to big projects. They have a broad theoretical production which reflects their double approach to practice. As a counterpoint to Place de la Republique, I would like to mention, to make, to mention uh, Place uh, du Grand Paris, first a collective reflection, later published as a book, where TVK unfolds 40 basic principles for the conception of public spaces of the region of Grand Paris. Therefore, the counterpoint with Place de la Republique is not only disciplinary, but also geographical. The book constitutes a very uh, helpful manual, a roadmap on a field where usually empty words abound. The authors go directly to the bone and share concrete tools for the improvement of public spaces. A set of tools guided by values, ambitions in the world of the authors, loaded with multiple meanings, disponibility, continuity and evolvability. Today, Pierre Alain visit the classroom and review many of the thesis projects. This ambition ran transversely across the whole conversation. How to define the scale of the intervention and understand the necessary resources how to reuse the built heritage, how to involve users in the planning of public space, how to improve the urban landscape and design more accessible, more hospitable public spaces. These are only a few, perhaps the most obvious, questions we should answer with the project in our hands. We have the privilege of having an expert in doing so. Let's grab pen and paper. Well, good, good evening, everyone. Do you, do you hear me well? Yeah, it's fine. Um, first of all, I, I, I want to apologize because I need to speak English because my, my Spanish is so long ago. So I understand when you speak, guys, but I'm not able to do it in Spanish. So I will do it in English. Um, if we have time for questions, if you want to ask questions in Spanish, it's okay. I think I will understand and try to, to answer. Um, I want also to thank um, the university and Marcelo especially um, for the invitation and also the French Embassy and French Institute for the invitation. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, I have to tell you it's my first time in Buenos Aires, my first time in, in Argentina. I've been several times in, uh, in South America, but my first time here and I've been already 
spending two incredible days. The city is more than I imagine. It's, it's kind of crazy. I'm trying to reach the river. I will see. I will let you know if I, if I can do it later in the, in the, in the trip. Um, and I, I, will, I will start by uh, telling you that um, I, I want to talk about architecture, of course, in a school of architecture. But starting from a, a point of view that is, what is architecture? And what architecture maybe has to deal with now in, in my or our opinion at uh, TVK. Uh, maybe the idea is that what we thought for a long time architecture was is evolving. It's, it has been evolving all the time, of course, but now it's evolving maybe in a more rapid way. And um, maybe I can start with this image um, because I think that the main question that architecture has to face now is the same question that all the, the, the realms of science um, now deals with, is the Earth. I think the main question for all kinds of sciences now is the Earth. And maybe in the 20th century, the question for architecture was something else. It was about uh, the number of people, about housing people, massive housing, about um, hygiene, giving good conditions for transforming cities, but I think now we're facing a new question, new for us architects, not so new in, in, in the, the time, in the history of mankind, but that is so different in different parts of the world, but at the same time it's just one unique question for all of us, which is the planet Earth. And this drawing is uh, one of the first drawing that you can find on, on, in the history of architecture, the famous book by Auguste Choisy. I don't know if you ever heard about this uh, uh, famous book, published in 1901. And this drawing for me tells us that to build something, to, you have to make the transportation of material. And to transport a stone, you have to build something before. And architecture is much more, maybe, or is also the, the shape that you're giving to the earth before making a building. So maybe I will claim today that architecture is much more than what we pretend it to be. It's much broader than what you can find in many architectural publications. Architecture is constantly reducing. There are forces that are constantly reducing what we should consider architecture. It's always trying to put us into some kind of corner, which is how to make something beautiful, because any building that we're trying to do has to be beautiful. But architecture is not just only that. It's about how beautiful we can make when we trying to build the earth. Because we've been trying to build the earth for a very long time. And this is architecture. It's not a new thing. So the shape that you're giving to the ground is so important. 
And maybe that's one of the reasons that it's so difficult to reach the river, because as a student said before during our conversation, it's impossible to get to the river, because every time it's getting a bit further. And then I took a look at the, the size of the what you call the river, which is a delta, which is so big, and it's, it's 50 kilometers wide. So I thought, wow, we have a long way to go before it, you know, it, it's, it's full of polders, one after the others. So I claim that architecture is everything, the buildings, the grounds, and there's one notion that is very much used in other uh, disciplines and other sciences and very much not despised but not, not considered in architecture realm, which is infrastructure. When you, when you talk about infrastructure, maybe among us we could, we could ask ourselves, what do you think about infrastructure? You think it's what's underneath, what's below, what's under the architecture. I think infrastructure is much more than that. And I think infrastructure is not just an object. Of course, we know many kind of infrastructures with an S, many different equipments, many different objects, like a highway, a railroad, all of these, of course, are infrastructures. All of these that we can find in the buildings are infrastructures. But without the S, infrastructure is a concept. It's a concept that can help us think our relationship to the earth. And this is what I find very interesting in this concept, is how can we think about our relationship to the earth. If you think about the, the spider, the spider needs something to inhabit the earth. It needs an infrastructure. Without the web, it cannot inhabit the earth. Without this movement of the ground, of the material, of the, of the, 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 the earth itself, we cannot inhabit the earth. This is infrastructure. Infrastructure is the mediation between us and the earth. And I think it's a very strong concept to um, question our relationship to the earth. So I will try to make some kind of journey in our projects, in our thinking, um, using this concept of infrastructure. And maybe I can, I can um, uh, say something before this journey using um, what we've been uh, discussing with uh, um, the, the studios that you, um, uh, uh, Marcelo, Sebastian, and, and the fifth year, the thesis project you're, you're doing here, uh, we're discussing. Um, it's the idea that redescription, redescription or, and reorganization as uh, the theme that uh, uh, you were uh, building is trying to do is, is understanding some buildings, some parts of the cities. It's a bit the same that we are trying to do for many years now. But also incorporating in this, in this attempt to understand the ground itself, all this thing that is very difficult to see. Because to see a building is in a way not easy but possible because it's, it's above the ground. When you're standing on the ground, you see it. But what's under the ground, or in the ground, or the ground itself, is very difficult to see. So what we're trying to do is trying to get able to, to make a description, an understanding of this crust of the earth. 
because we're dealing with the crust of the earth that has a special climate and we're trying to understand what it is. Uh, this is a very famous part of Paris. It's called Les Halles. It's the center of Paris. It's it, it used to be the center marketplace. Then at some point in the 60s, um, they decided to take off all the halls that were uh, uh, hosting the, the market. And they decided to make this huge hall. So what's interesting with infrastructure is that it's an enigma. What is the infrastructure here? Is it the whole? Is it like the, the huge work that you're doing to dig inside the earth? Or is it the way it's becoming a new uh, ground for the existing buildings on the, on the side? Where you can see the structure? Or infrastructure maybe is the new um, flows, the new transportation that you're bringing when you have made, made this hole. The hole was made to bring new subterranean transportation. So you have metro system, regional train system. So it's maybe that the infrastructure. Or maybe it's the new building that, you, <laughs> that you're making in the hole. So maybe it's that new huge structure inside the hole. And you, you couldn't tell it's a building, but it's much bigger than any small building that is around. It's building the earth at a scale that is enormous. Or maybe infrastructure is this whole flat surface that you can see here, this gray area, this whole new platform. Maybe this is it, the new huge square, huge modernist platform. Or maybe the infrastructure is 20 kilometers away from that in Paris where all the ground that you've taken off, when you make this hole, they brought the ground 20 kilometers away and they made a park. So maybe the infrastructure is the park. So it's an enigma. And I think it's worse as architects trying to solve that enigma. Um, so we've been working on Paris for a long time. And uh, I like this idea that um, an architect is something that is somewhere. You, you, you take time to understand a territory. It's not just like that. And territories now are so complex. Cities are so complex. And I like, the, by the way, the, the, the comparison that maybe sometimes is possible between Paris and Buenos Aires because it's kind of same same sizes and same kind of uh, uh, metropolitan problems. But we've, we've started just as our thesis project, um, maybe if you, you've heard with uh, um, Bruter and uh, Alexandre Terrio, you've heard about uh, this uh, kind of uh, thinking because we were doing this thesis project together a long time ago, more than 20 years from now. And I wanted to tell you a bit more about this um, um, ring road, which, <laughs> which was our, our thesis project. Um, this is a map from um, mid-19th century, and it shows the, the last wall of Paris. So it was built in 1845, and when it was built, it was already in a way obsolete because the cannons from uh, Prussia were able to go over. So it's like you're building a wall that is 100 
and 50 meters wide and it's obsolete. It's 35 kilometers long. And the section is like this. And this is one, 150 meters wide. So it's huge. It looks like that. So you have this wall. This is inner Paris. This is outside. And outside, of course, when you make a wall, you have a non-buildable zone to protect the wall. So it's the non-edificandi zone. And it's 200 meters. 250 meters wide. So you have a 400 meters wide circle around Paris. And this, if you look at a map today, you can see it perfectly well. And this is some kind of um, incredible act of architecture for me. It's really what I, what I call architecture of the earth. And we're so convinced that doing one singular building is very important. And I believe so. Even if the smallest thing, like doing a chair, is so important. But this has to be considered too. <laughs> because it changes the history of a territory. And not only the history, it changes the shape the condition, the way you behave in it, the way you feel, the way you move. So, um, in 1919, so sev 60 or 70 years after the, 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 the construction, they decided to demolish the wall. And it took a while to demolish. <laughs> because it's so big. And then um, demolishing the wall as all walls in, in European cities, it was replaced by a boulevard. And I don't know if you know what boulevard means. Everybody thinks it's a French word, so chic, because it's like some kind of promenade that gives you access to shops and, you know, so French. Um, it's a, a, a word that comes from uh, um, Flemish and it means um, terrassement. What's the word in, uh, in English? It means flatness, flattening, um, grounding. So the world boulevard, so chic, means flattening the earth and giving it like a, a good condition to move and to, to be able to, to make transportation. So then we built partly this <laughs> non-buildable zone here. So you can see clearly the, the, the boulevard here that was on, the wall was here like this, and this is the non-buildable zone and this, is the remain of the, the, the limit that were not supposed to be crossed. And then at the exterior line, like here exactly, was built the ring road, which is the highway. So in 1958 until 1973, the ring road was built, 35 kilometers of highway. So this boulevard périphérique um, was born in 73. I was born in 73. So he's like my twin brother. And I've been trying to understand it for a long time. <laughs> and sometimes it's underneath. Sometimes it's elevated. Sometimes it's on the same level. And I think it's a great building. Of course, it's um, usually despised because 
because the cars, they make noise, because pollution, because it's terrible. And it's terrible because we don't look at it, because we don't care about it, we just use it. And it's terrible because uh, we, we're not thinking that it can be beautiful or it can be not just useful. Um, but in some kind of um, imagery, uh, it has some kind of poetry. Like, you know, this 60s, uh, 70s images where it seems that the cars, they don't make noise and they're so swift, you know, they, they, they're just sliding like this and uh, between trees, so cool. But this is a map that is very interesting because it shows everything that is, is, is in color, shows the ground that was transformed, either going down or going up. So in blue, it's going down. In red, it's going up. So basically, this is a part of Paris. This is a northern part of Paris. This is center, Leal, that I was talking about, and this is the ring road. And everything was transformed. All of it. So the idea that, we, you know, when we're talking about nature, like, what is nature? Nothing is nature anymore. <laughs> like, with the idea that we have, nothing is not transformed. Oh, did a mistake, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come back. Okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. okay. Come back. Sorry. So, um, so we made this big study on the peripherique, on the ring road. We wrote two books about this. And I don't want to talk more about that, but maybe to concentrate on one point, because later we, we did a competition and it was the beginning of TVK and we won a competition here in a very small part of the peripherique in the northern, uh, northwestern part of Paris. And this is what we call doors, doors to enter the last wall. They kept this name door. And, uh, and this one is not, not so famous and not so easy to understand because it does, doesn't have access to the ring road. So you don't know it because it's not like you enter or you go out from the ring road. So it's just a, an eleva elevated part of the ring road. It goes above and the, 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 the ground is uh, passing through. But before it was like that, it was like full of cars because all the services of the city we had put under the ring road and around. So is the problem the ring road itself or is the problem uh, the, the, the effect of the ring road? What we put under because we're adding cars and, and, and parking spaces and it was not only the parking space, it was, you know, when you, uh, the police take your car because it's not parked well, they bring here, you know, this huge parking lot when you have to go <laughs> to find your, your, your car and pay the, the fee. Uh, it was like this, you know, so you don't want to be a pedestrian and pass here. It smells bad. And, and we win the competition. We won a competition and we're trying to give a new relationship between the two parts of the city. Because our idea is that this part of the city is not Paris, not the suburbs. It's a part by itself. It's a bit different. And it's a city by itself. Um, so we called it la ville du périphérique, the city of the périphérique. And we were trying to invent the urban features, the urban typologies that could go with the périphérique because it's an open space, a very large open space, because here you can see the former uh, non-billable zone. Uh, here you can see the boulevard uh, with its building that, uh, that replaced the wall. And one interesting, there are several interesting uh, features here. One was in the zone, they built uh, a cemetery here. And it's very strange and poetic because the highway is elevated over the tombs. Um, 
and we started to try to understand the ground as always and the ground was like this so you have the ring road here elevated you have the low part which is the former non-buildable zone and they had made a uh, sports field in it and it was lower because you remember that the non-buildable zone was lower than the former wall so the former wall was here and this part lower we got very interested in it and it's the same when you have to deal with a building that you can find now and you want to transform it. It's like you have an amount of material in the building and that's what is at your disposal to work with. You're trying not to bring anything from out to work with what you have inside. So it was a play of building something here to be able to displace all the cars that I showed before, all the uh, parking lots, and we put them here inside this little um, underground system, or lower ground, let's call it, and the sports field we put on top. So in the end, you have a relationship here on the side with the sports field, it expands your view, and then, here, sorry, you have the ring road. So, to do this, we, free, we freed all the space that was under the, the highway, and we could make a whole urban project out of it. So here you are under this um, building that is uh, for the firemen, and the firemen, they have their trucks under. And on this side here, you have the sports field, the fireman uh, system. And on this side, you have the ring road. And there, it could become a public space. Because the ground is, in the first place, a public space. This is the part of the world that we're sharing, the public means for all of us. Public means you have the right to be there. Public means you have the right to do everything you want as long as you respect the law. In France, for instance, you don't have, you don't have the right to get naked in, in, in the public space. But you have, to do, you have the right to do almost everything. So it became a public space and you could go under quite easily. And then we started to, to look, and maybe we're just starting to look at the highway in a different way. We're just maybe starting to think that it's a kind of architecture. It's something that maybe it's beautiful or maybe could become beautiful if we take a, take a special look at it. And it's also the occasion to have new programs, new um, ideas, new uses, because the, the public space is all about uses, but I will talk more about that. Still, in Paris, I can show you um, an, uh, um, different kind of projects. Those projects, they are linked to other infrastructural questions and other infrastructures objects. Those infrastructures are the railways because there are many railways in Paris, and one of them is coming here from the east, from Germany, it's coming here. And another one is coming from the south, along with the river, this is the River Seine. And we did two projects in special condition here. And you can see that those two projects, they are along with the railways, but close to the Ville du Périphérique, close to the edge, close to this ring road. One of them is here, the first one. It's here, and uh, it was the former uh, fridge of Paris, where all the goods would arrive, and we, we would put the, the goods um, like uh, food and wine in here. 
it was a, a, a very big station and designed as a big fri fridge. And this position is crucial because it's an a intersection of the river, the belt, and the link between a big wood here called Bois de Vincennes and the, this um, green corridors that are linked to the river. So this position, working with the, the um, specialist in ecology, uh, we understood that is a very crucial point for uh, ecological uh, uh, continuity. And there was many projects before we started to work on that. And the project, so you can see here the, the, the building, the, whole, the, the former station. And many projects were trying to, um, to build this, uh, this uh, station, to build on top of this station. And the station was built like this, series of vault like this, and um, <coughs> another very light construction on top. So two very different construction, one above the other. So we started to redesign, redraw this building, and uh, we understood that um, in a way, it's a new ground, and we could, because this is not the existing, it's the project, but we understood that this was, this structure was able to bear a new ground. So, because the porosity of the ground that did not exist, because you had this uh, building underneath, we thought, okay, let's put a lot of ground in here, so that you can have a horizontal continuity of the ground. Because we're always looking at full earth, as we call it in French. Um, yeah, full earth, plein terre, you know, tierra aliena, no? Like, but we're always thinking in terms of vertical continuity. But there, it's impossible, so we're trying to do it as a horizontal continuity. Because for all the, the living species, it's very important to have a continuity. And then we thought, okay, rather than demolishing or trying to build many buildings in there and bridging or, or crossing the, the, the former station, we said, okay, we can build here on the limit, not on the building itself and to preserve it and to reuse it completely. So we made a project keeping um, the, the big hole above, doing a big uh, um, full earth garden here, and buildings on the side, like buildings would come in the full earth, and this would become horizontal full earth. So in a way, it's a bit counterintuitive because you would think, okay, let's build here and let's prevent from building here. Let's preserve the full earth. And we did the opposite because it's uh, more easy to build here also because in a way, it's very strange to design buildings in conditions that are so difficult, you know? Like you put your buildings in so complex situation that the economy of the building is becoming crazy. So there's no money left for what's the, the goal of a building, which is the space that you're giving to people, the quality of the building, the, 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 the capacity to have a, a lasting building because it's, uh, it's strongly built. And doing so, we were trying also to find a new relationship with the River Seine. So trying to focus on very uh, key elements, trying to integrate also two very different climate. The climate when you're above 
and the climate when you're under. What can you do under in a fridge? You can do many things in a fridge. You can maybe grow some special uh, vegetables that don't need light. You can grow mushrooms. You can grow endive. You know this? Endivia. Yeah. Easy one. And another um, uh, project is uh, an, a, a very different condition. It, it's linked to the railway system still, uh, but this is no river this time. It's still close to the um, Ville du Périphérique. You see the boulevard, you see the housing, and you see the non-billable zone and the railroad. And the lot is here, and it was a former industrial zone, of course, between all those railways. And we won um, a, a, a very uh, peculiar competition called Reinventing Paris. It was an interesting kind of competition that was launched um, eight years ago, maybe. And the idea of the city was um, make a call for a private sector um, 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 ideas. And um, they proposed like 20 sites and the private sector would have to come up with a team of, cons of uh, designers, of uh, uh, scientists, engineers, but also of developers and of users. So all the chain of uh, uh, the project. And we had to work on this site, and this site is very big. It's more than 200 meters, but it's a triangle, and a triangle is very difficult. There, sorry, there was a building here, and this triangle was in between the highway, the railways. And we won the competition with different ideas, but one of the main ideas is that Okay, it's for the private sector, and the private sector was uh, uh, over to take this whole uh, plot. But we said, this is public space. Because it's big, we need to give back some public space to the city after that. And the public space was also um, meant to give a new porosity to the city. Because this is a station that gives access to the railroad here. So you can go under the railroad and you can cross over there. And this is the boulevard that replaced the wall. And this is a new part of the city. So we can give access and a new porosity like this. But because the, high, the railways were elevated, we started to think about two layers. The layer of this ground that goes under, this uh, uh, public space, and this is in gray, the full ground, and you know, spaces that opens on this uh, public space, and above, as you can see in the section, so what, this was the existing condition, and we tried to use the holes in the ground that were already existing, and we kept them, and because the railways were elevated, we proposed this uh, second uh, level, the second ground level, let's say, this elevated ground level, which is in the same level as the railway. So this is like some very uh, specific kind of uh, housing block. And it's not just housing, it's, there are 12 different programs. It's housing, in here, but it's also student housing, it's a, a, hotel, a youth hostel here, um, it's an office building here, it's a hotel here, and on the ground you have a very large sports facility, 4,000 square meters, you have a, a logistic space here, you have commercial space, many, many different things. And you can find here the public space, and you can see here the elevated ground space on the two sides, which is a collective space. And we decided to build it in stone. But 
I'm, I'm talking about load-bearing stone. So it's 25 to 30 centimeters stones. Um, and the stones, they, they come from the, the region, the Paris region. Uh, so in a way, it's coming back also to the materials of the earth, like what you have at your disposal very close by and trying to make this whole facade in stones. It's also uh, trying to make a relationship with an architecture that is about using this stone and using um, the material um, of Paris. And it's also about the, the simplicity uh, and the rationality of the architecture. Like every building has its ground floor with the public space here. This is during the construction. It's almost finished now. And this is the, the, the level uh, that is um, elevated on the same level as the railways. So that the railways and the station that you have here becomes like the, the, the trottoir, the, 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 the sidewalk of the building. You know, the, the, the station becomes like a new public space opening to the building. So um, the idea is that you're transforming a, an infrastructural condition that was not accessible, that you could not cross, that you could not go into, into a new kind of typology, new kind of urban uh, uh, block, that is very porous and that doesn't have any any underground. There are no parking uh, spaces. First uh, project this size because it's a project that has 35,000 square meters or so. No parking parking lots. No uh, uh, no cars in there. And for all these different programs, it was some kind of strong battle. It's a, it's a zero carbon project in, uh, uh, in the operation, not in construction, but in operation. Meaning all these different um, programs, they are complementary one to the other. Like we're reusing the hot water from the housing to cool the office building. And there are many devices like this to use the energy in, 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 from a program to another. So these were two kinds of projects um, showing the, the capacity that um, the, the infrastructural work that has been done uh, with this crust of the earth that I'm talking about, like the shape that was given to Paris, how it can be reused, recycled in new um, urban conditions, new programs, new um, uses for, for lots that were not accessible. And this is a, a very different uh, question about infrastructure. It's the idea that a building itself is an infrastructure. And then maybe I, I can comment also on the idea that one, one, another idea on, on infrastructure. The idea is that if you want to think as infrastru infrastructure as a concept, you can think it not only as um, an object, but also as a, as a verb, as something that uh, is an action. And it's an action within time it gives you the possibilities of the building within time. The building is, is um, um, this building is an office building built in the 70s, late 70s, quite banal um, building. But like every building, if you look at it for a long time, you find something that is interesting. And what was interesting in, in this building is what, if, even if, if it was not done in a very great way, very interesting way, um, it was trying to free two workspace and to have a core here that was 
taken out. And this would go with a special um, structure that maybe I can, no, I will show later, uh, a, a structure that is a mushroom structure, meaning that there are no beams. You have the columns and the slabs, and the structure is linked between the columns and the slabs, so what we call a mushroom structure. And no beams means that the interior space is freed in a plan, but in plan condition, but also in section, which was great. And we thought, okay, we can trans transform this uh, into a housing, student housing building. So we were trying to understand what has to be taken off. And it's a bit like the Domino Le Corbusier project. What is the good um, structure what is the effective structure? What is the infrastructure? And in this case, infra doesn't mean under. Infra means later. Infra is a time question. Infra is, and you find it in, in literature, you know, when in a book you read C infra, it means C later. So I think always time and space are linked. And in this condition, infra for us means what gives you the capacity to think about the future? What is going to last? What is important in the structure, in the, structure, in the actual structure, that will um, make a gesture toward the future? And we kept those two free uh, spaces and we took off the, the, the core. We kept, the, of course, the columns here, the mushroom structure with the, the walls that existed. And we added another structure here. And we really wanted to have the old one, the new one, just like one beside the other, and that's it. And the other idea is that doing so, uh, we made uh, exterior corridors, exterior circulation, so that for the student, you would have a collective space and an exterior space, because it's very difficult in the Paris building economy to make an exterior space for students, because the developers, they say, well, they're here for one year or two years. We don't, we don't have money to make them an exterior space, which is, of course, bullshit. But, you know, the developer's bullshit is very strong. So um, we thought, OK, you don't want to make an exterior space? You have to do it because it's the way to get into the room. <laughs> and doing so, it's also the way that the room is bigger, because it's not bigger at all, but it seems bigger, because the room for students is 18 square meters. I mean, you're going to spend one year, or maybe two or three, in 18 square meters. 18 square meters, you would want to make it the more efficient. The, you want to have the room that looks bigger. So if you make a corridor here to enter, then in the room, you will have also a small corridor to pass through the bathroom to get into the bedroom. So in the 18 square meters, you would have two square meters of circulation. So it was a win-win situation. And the plan would become very specific. And we would use the, the ground floor that had this, uh, um, not parking space, but uh, there was already a, a ground floor, uh, an underground floor like this. And we did new housing uh, on the whole levels by um, expanding the garden. So this is the facade. And this is the new column that we built. And all those columns are different because of the geometry 
of the the corridors, the exterior corridors, because they have this uh, not straight lines, uh, this broken line, let's say. Um, we have different column uh, each time. So it's like this uh, poetry of rationality, you know, like, because it's, uh, yeah, I forgot to, to say that in plan, uh, because there are more people passing here than here, it goes um, in, a, in a thinner um, thinner way here and a larger way here. So the columns are special, each one, um, and you have the exception of this double column here when it's, get, it's getting um, very wide um, to link the two spaces, and that's it. You have this new structure with the, the new floors, the corridors, the exterior corridors, and opened, there are like balconies, and they are just uh, attached to the existing structure not to fall down. So for me, this is really about um, finding the right qualities of the existing building, adding the right qualities of a new, um, a new construction, and doing them having a unity together. So now I'm coming to public spaces project because and I, I, I would like to, to um, encourage young architects and, and students to do public spaces uh, because I, I think it's great. I think it's um, very rewarding. And I think it's um, also very difficult, which makes it very rewarding. And I think it's very important, most, more, most of it, mostly, because um, if we don't design public spaces, who will do it? And sometimes you have great engineers that are able to design public spaces. But I think we need to design public spaces, because public spaces are the spaces, once again, that we live in together. So. Um, as uh, was said before, uh, Place de la République is um, a very um, important project in our history. It's, it's, uh, this is a geological map and it's taking place here, Place de la République, in a very special condition because it, it was an old arm of the River Seine. Of course, a thousand years ago, <coughs> the River Seine was much bigger, a bit like yours, but in a European condition, you know, like <laughs> tiny, tiny. Um, and this, those were swamps. And Place de la République is here at, at the top of the Marais and just before the, the hills. And there was another wall because Paris has had seven walls. So <laughs> there was a wall here and there was a door here and Place de la République was a wall and was a door before of course it was not Place de la République um, and this door at some point when the wall was taken down it became a, a boulevard uh, with trees alignments and promenades and you have this angle two different uh, geometries and so you see one boulevard here, one boulevard here. And the Place de la République is a Haussmann project. You know, Haussmann is the one that did the, the modern Paris in the late uh, 19th century and who made this great boulevard, as we call them now, this great uh, uh, go through uh, um, uh, streets. And uh, this is the shape of the Place de la République, which is a very big rectangle, 300 meters long, 120 meters wide. So 
when it was created, it looked like this by the end of the 19th century. And it was called Place de la République because it was created for the new republic, which was not the first republic uh, in France, but uh, <clears throat> it was the third republic. And there was a statue of the republic that was built in the center. So it's the very classical architecture. It's like a very big room, you know? It's a square, but it's like you're in your living room, but for the city. It's a very big living room where ever, everybody gathers um, and with um, big alignments like sofas, you know, and with the kitchen in the middle and uh, um, stuff like that. But very classical uh, composition, you know, with classical architecture here. But then it became uh, like a very big transportation hub. Uh, because you have to imagine that uh, underneath here, you have five subway lines. You have 200,000 people using commuting here, going out and in. And you have um, five bus lines also here on the surface. And you had so many uh, transportation for private cars because it had become a double roundabout. You could go un uh, around the statue of the Republic and you could go around like this, the rectangle. So it was a double roundabout one way. So it looked like this, like just space for cars. It was impossible to cross. And so many Parisian people, they couldn't tell how was the Place de la République before because they, they were never here, you know? They, they, went, they used the Place de la République in the subway, but not outside. So this is the underground plan. Everything is occupied. Impossible to plant a tree. The trees that existed, you cannot plant another one. <laughs> and you were wondering, how can this tree be able to live because of the little amount of, of ground that it has? So basically, this um, uh, square is like um, the, the, um, the top floor of a building. It's like the roof of a building, but a huge building. And it took us a while during the competition to understand the ground. As I said before, it's very difficult to understand the ground because you don't see it. And we were having a very hard time. Sometimes landscape architects are much more educated than us to look at the ground and to look at the layers, to look at understanding the layers. And I just want to, un to explain this to you because for us it was very, very important. The, the section, this is the project section, but I should have put the existing, the former section. It was like this, more or less. It was like a bit of a curve. And there was, as you can see here, be between this point and this point, there was one meter difference. But one meter on, let's say, 50 or 60 meters is very difficult to see because it's a 2% slope, one and a half from time to time. Very difficult to see one and a half percent slope. And we understood that it was a very strong problem because you were always having the feeling as a pedestrian, that you were not welcome in the space. Not because it was only used by cars, because of the architecture of the ground. The architecture of the ground with this section was expelling you from the space, was telling you, go out. So we tried to build up a section that would give unity to this space. So because it was impossible to make it flat because those points were impossible to move. The only possibility was to make it almost flat in what direction? 
So the almost flat in a public space is a 1% slope because you cannot have a 0% slope. 0% slope never exists because what do you do with the water? The water stays. So we did a 1% slope, so the water goes down a little bit. And then when it gets there, you take it. So underground system, full of things, subway system, and the 1% slope. The 1% slope gives you terraces, and here it gives you a 3.5% slope going the other, other direction. This is going down, this is going up like this. Doing so, you have two big terraces with more ground, and you can plant trees because you've gained ground. Otherwise, you cannot plant trees. The main idea also of the plan is that during the competition, and you have to imagine um, public competitions like this, um, it's uh, because it's a public commission, it's an anonymous competition, so you have a brief, you ask questions anonymously, and then you're on your own for three months. And in the brief, you had six existing, not existing, six possible schemes for mobility that were given to us. Like the city of Paris had studied the mobility possibilities, and they said, you can do it like this or like this. And in the six schemes, they were always going, the cars were always going around. And we felt at some point we need to take a risk there. So we came up with an, a seventh scheme. So when you have a brief with six possibilities, <laughs> that's an architect's decision. Let go out and make another scheme. So what you can see in this topographic plan is that the mobility scheme is that way. It's a U-shape now. It's going that way. So this is not a road for cars. This is pedestrian too. So, well, it's pedestrian. You, buses can go there, but they can go at five kilometers an hour. So it's pedestrian, and you have no, um, so no, no difference in the in the in the pavement. So this is the kind of drawings that we made for studying the uses understanding the ground, understanding the condition, and trying to understand the uses is not being able to predict the uses. It's impossible to predict the uses. Life is much more powerful than what you can expect. So it, it's become like this kind of uh, very large square where you can do a bit, a bit what you want, which was our purpose. But the thing maybe that can matter for you guys is that it's really architecture when you think that this has to be designed in a very, very precise way. Meaning this, the 1% slope ends here, and there you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stairs. And we think that seven, eight, and maximum nine stairs of 13 centimeters is really the maximum if you want that when you're standing here, you feel the unity of the space. Like when you're standing here, you see the floor. So you're not belonging to another part of the square. It's the same square. It's the same uh, space. It's the same living room. So, it has taken so many uses, like um, manifestation, demonstration, uh, civic um, um, demonstration. And we were inspired by this uh, text by Susan Torre, this uh, um, architect from Argentina, who wrote this uh, text uh, about uh, Plaza de Macho and uh, was explaining how the mothers that were constantly using the space 
were um, marking the space. She was explaining that the space, the public space, was becoming the, the collective memory of uh, this movement. So the public space is also about um, an architecture that brings the collective memory, that um, is um, bringing into the material the collective memory. Um, so many different uses, and maybe one of the more, the most, um, um, I don't find the word, but um, moving, was after the, the attempt, um, the, the terrorist attacks uh, in Paris, it, the, 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 the statue of the Republic became like a memorial, like an open air, open air um, religious space with, for any religion, like celebration, religious or, or spiritual celebration. And it's very moving that to feel that the, the space that you've built is at the same time so big and so unified because we didn't want to cut it into pieces, you know. It was an easy way to say, okay, we're going to make parts of it, you know, like there you can do skateboard, there you have the playground for kids, there you can have the, the, the sports facilities or stuff like that. We wanted to keep it as a scene, you know, like an open open space and this such a big space can become an intimate space you know like you can um, have um, a moment for yourself in this kind of space so I remember that during the competition we we said several times that we want the people to be able to sit on the knees of the Republic it was a, 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 a a way of saying that we wanted people to be able to go to the statue of the republic because it was they were unable to go there because of the of the circulation and in the end they, it was even much more than what you expected um, if i if i go just a little bit uh, faster on different public spaces project that uh, we we're doing now one is still on the same ring road <laughs> our famous uh, brother in arms. And um, this is a ring road. This is the part of the ring road where it's underneath. And you have a, sh uh, um, a roundabout once again here with a huge hole. This hole is 80 meters wide. And those 400 meters are here. And so many people, pedestrian, they cross here from Paris to Montreuil the suburbs, um, both ways. Um, and here you have the flea market. So it's a very difficult space with, once again, a very difficult topography and urban condition and ground condition. And the idea, when we started the, the, the project, the idea of the city of Paris was to make a bridge here for cars and buses and everything. So it was another new uh, big infrastructure, very um, uh, expensive infrastructure for mobility that was asked to us. And they said, okay, we've been dealing this with the population for 15 years. Now we know what we want to do because it was a, it was a question for 15 years. So make a project with this idea, make a bridge, and design the rest. That's always a tricky question. So we thought, in the end, are you sure, guys? Because with the 40 million bridge that you want to build here, maybe you can make the whole public space here with the same amount of money. If you, if you make on the circle that is a void today, you make not a very heavy bridge 
for buses and trucks and everything, but just for pedestrian. So very light structure, which is also much thinner. So much uh, lower in the ground because you have to go above the, the, the highway. So the topography is much more continuous. And then you can make an, a new square, not just a bridge in the middle. So in the end, we succeeded in convincing, and we're doing this project, who is a long process and long discussion, um, and trying to bridge over like this, and to come with this uh, uh, new public space, and new also way of uh, moving around, not in the middle, you, we have to move around the 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 place de la république system like a u shaped system is impossible because you have uh, the highway exits on both sides so you have to connect here but then you can work very closely on those roads for, uh, for um, the limited number of cars that you want to make with the uh, uh, um, uh, lanes for cycles and this becomes a piece of architecture that is very interesting, you know? Like, you have to make this special uh, structure here, and then another one above, um, and then on the transversal section, um, you, you make this uh, piece connecting the two sides of the, of the circle. So, it's a very... Um, strong um, public space uh, that will come here because it's a garden, because it's in the green belt um, and those spaces are in full ground uh, on the sides of the périphérique so you can plant so many trees and have a very special climate there and you can have this special piece of architecture because it's just a little bit elevated so it's like uh, a circle building on the ground like this and creating this uh, new uh, um, relationship with the existing here. As you can see, like a, um, a flat circle that emerges a little bit and that connects on different points. So this is an ongoing project, and there's a, a, an urban project that is going on on the sides. Um, another project is in, uh, in Switzerland, in Lausanne, which is the, the, the station square. And it's also another um, way of dealing with the slope. And in this case, it's also this 4% slope that you have on the square. And 4% slope, this one you can see very well, but it's not comfortable at all when you have the whole square that is 4%. And I don't know if you've, some of you have, has ever been to Lausanne, but Lausanne is a city in a slope, quite the opposite to Buenos Aires. Just a slope, but strong slope. The slope going to the lake, the Geneva Lake, the Lehmann Lake. And all the public spaces are trying to make a rest, like a balcony, a uh, uh, or horizontal space in the slope. So we're trying to make a horizontal space in a square that was in a not very good slope, you know? And it, it was this also this urban condition where Lausanne is, you know, this continuous slope here, and this is the square here, and this is the, the, the train station. So you go under and you go up on the, on the tracks. So basically this is the idea. It's once again finding some stairs to make the division, to make a, a, a horizontal space more or less. And to create a two horizontal space that work together. Like the, this idea of not having stairs um, and in a 4% slope is for us 
uh, not the good one because you don't have uh, uh, you don't have good conditions uh, uh, in in any part of the of the square. So this is the kind of drawing that we like to do in the office. Like, how do you make a plan of the topography that tells you what the project is? You know, and it's it's really about understanding the spaces, what is continuous, where you can find the the the, the strong slopes, the the curves. So basically, that's the project. Oh, sorry, that's the project. Ah, uh -huh. sorry. The, the the two lines of stairs like this, and I also like those um, small series of stairs because they are uh, uses incentive. That's where people gather. That's where people sit to have lunch. That where pe people sit to talk together, to wait for the train, to wait for the people coming out of the train. Stuff like that. Because the square of a station is not just a square that you cross. It's not just a square for transportation or for mobility. The square, a public space, is somewhere where you can do nothing. Just read a book or wait. It's very important to do nothing. So this is this relationship with the mountains on the other side and trying to do this balcony, so the square is here. And the balcony idea is facing the existing station, the building of the station. So the balcony is looking at the classical building of the station. It's also an idea of, of uh, um, heritage, you know, the, 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 the important buildings. Um, so here you have the, the rail, uh, rail lines. This is the existing station building, and this is the square with the, the, the little stairs. Um, and maybe a, a, a last project in the, in the public spaces, and then I, I will finish with a um, uh, few more um, stories quickly. I don't know how much time. Um, is a, um, a project that we won, a competition that we won in Rome, um, which is the once again the the station square. Um, it's a very special condition once again because uh, Rome is like, of course, the testimony of the Earth that I'm talking about from the beginning. You know, this Earth that is expanding. If you if you take a look at Rome, it's like the Earth was few meters smaller before. Our Earth is a few meter, meters bigger. And our Earth is full of our materials, full of the materials of the rivers, full of chicken. You know, we're eating so many chickens that the grounds of the Earth are full of chicken. Chicken bones everywhere. I mean, it's a crazy story that we're like expanding the world with chickens. And it's also a space that is very difficult to understand because it's twice bigger as the Place de la République. So it's just kind of, you know, public spaces that becomes so difficult. And you have the station here. Um, you have antique buildings here. You have antique um, structures here underneath. And here you have, I, I still don't believe it at all, but I'm trying to believe in it. Supposedly you have nothing in here under, just ground where you could plant trees. I mean, there are full of trees already, but they're saying that the archaeologists are telling us that here it's okay. We just won the competition, I mean, just in Italian time, so one year ago. So uh, I will tell you another time if it's true, but we, we, did a, uh, we did a project in two parts. 
one part is linked to the station and is really like this huge square of a station above the archaeology the archaeolo the archaeological part and one is a garden but I, I won't tell you more about this project which is uh, about to to become we we about to become the study um, this is a study that we made for the public uh, spaces that are supposed to come with the uh, uh, the new metro system in Paris. We have a metro project, a metro system project in Paris that is under construction, where we're bu bu building more than 200 kilometers of metro, 68 new station, which is the biggest project of public transportation in the world right now. It was needed for a very long time. We're finally doing it, and um, the public society, uh, public company that is uh, doing this, building this uh, metro system, they commissioned us to do a study for the public spaces. So here you have to understand also the forces that are at stake always, is that the projects, they come from the transportation system comes from the engineers. The question is, how do I make people go from po one point to another? And once again, I think it's really needed in the city. But the thing is that from all the studies that we did on metropolitan, metro, metropolitan system is that if you have a highway, you use the highway. So the infrastructure decides. We're just following the infrastructure. I mean, this is the infrastructure. This is deciding a lot of it now. It, it, it enables us, but at the same time, it's, it's constraining us, it's, it's um, moving us. The infrastructure is moving us. And if you build a new transportation system, well, people will use it. They, 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 they cross the whole Buenos Aires every day because they can do it. Because they have a car and there's a highway. So they do it. So you just um, shift it or, or diminish it by twice and you see the result. There's no other possibility to than to change the infrastructure if you want to change the behavior. But we're still thinking the opposite, like, okay, we need to understand how many cars must go through it. But if you think that way, then you make big highways <laughs> because that many cars can go through it. Okay, I'm closing the discussion about that and just telling you that I think that public spaces are at least as important than the transportation <laughs> system. And when you come from the transportation, from the subway itself, and then with the station, you know, and at the end, they thought that maybe it was important to think about the public spaces that goes along. But the most time that we're spending is in the public space, you know, and when you're in the transportation system, you're looking at your uh, or your telephone or something. So I don't know if it's the same kind of experience. Um, we we did this huge map of existing transportation, subway and regional trains, with the new ones, trying to make it beautiful in the first place and trying to understand how it creates uh, uh, an architecture of the ground on the uh, on the of the underground in a way um, and how it creates very different uh, portion of the metropolis you know like here it's not the same feature or, or uh, figure than here or here or here or of course 
the, the central Paris. Nobody had done this before. And even this, this public company, they had not designed it like exactly the same way, all the existing transportation system and the new one in the same plan. Then we crossed it with the, the geology, trying to understand the different conditions. Then with the water system and the topography, uh, then with the big uh, uh, parks and open spaces system. And then we made those, and I won't tell you very long about this, because we made this book with the principle, as you said, the, the 40 principles, because we didn't want to look like it's, uh, we're telling the people how to design things. We wanted to be a book of public space culture. What question you should ask yourself, what themes, what notions should be addressed when you think about public spaces. Not take this material, make the stairs like this, this height, the bench like this, not like the ready-made uh, uh, book um, that tells you what to do. So we made the um, um, models, and the models, we made, we made four models, very simple. And uh, like this is one of them, but the four models they helped us to build um, hundreds of situations by using uh, the photography and the different kinds of situations, the different uses that could be um, um, brought into the public spaces, and uh, um, the different ways of uh, uh, showing always the ground and the surface. And, uh, and that was the, the main tool to talk about those uh, 40 principles. So it's also a way to tell you that um, I think when you make a book, you make architecture. A book is a project. A book is something that um, deals with the, um, the idea that architecture is something that has to be a discussion with the, a collective discussion, a discussion with the public. So books are projects, and I think uh, it's quite important to, to uh, think them as a small architecture, small uh, spaces. So this whole public space uh, uh, line brings me to um, two last uh, elements to finish. One quickly is in Houston, Texas. And it's about wastelands. It's about this whole uh, um, um, series of situations that we have in every met metropolis, which are wastelands, uh, lands that are polluted, lands that we have um, uh, infiltrated with so many things. This is a map of uh, the Gulf of Mexico with all the gas and petrol uh, um, drills everywhere. In this term, also, the earth is an architecture, you know, it's like we're always going deep in the ground to find the energy. Those are also very, very strange um, uh, features of architecture. <coughs> but the Gulf of Mexico, it's also this series of bayous, the series of uh, water lines that uh, end up in the Gulf. And it's giving also this uh, special condition of Houston, like this flat land, quite uh, comparable maybe in terms of uh, uh, geography to Buenos Aires, this uh, flat land that can be um, also flooded very often. As you know, there has been very dramatic uh, events in Houston when the flooding of the bayous and, uh, arrive. Um, and we were doing uh, competitions in two different situations. There you can see the grid and the, 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 um, one of the kind of ring road. And, and this image of you know, all these uh, uh, materials that we're transporting, like the polders that were built on the on the 
on the river here in Buenos Aires. Uh, this image also of this is the condition of architecture uh, and this is um, the city where architecture is expressing itself. Um, so the relationship that is always has to be um, kept between the two. It's unbreakable a relationship between the two conditions. So there were two sites. Um, one was here, very small, no, this little red light, red point, and this very large situation. So just to show you that um, a few images of those conditions, one is next to the bayou, it's an old incinerator, so it's like a, a mound, like a little hill full of um, ground, dirty ground, let's say. And the other one is like this, quite a, f a flat land, but it was garbage one kilometer one by one kilometer, of course, in a very poor neighborhood. And it became like a, a big wood, you know, uh, with the roads around and paths inside. But no, nobody goes there. It's a very poor um, Afro-American neighborhood. And it's part of the American history, of course, because the Afro-American, they're convinced uh, that the 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 this um, piece of land, the the um, the, the wasteland, uh, if the, they they open it, it's in the the goal to kill themselves. You know that if the if the the, the city opens the, the 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 wasteland as a public space. They don't want to go inside because they think that they will, they, they will die there because if they, I don't know, if they're children, they go and they, they eat something there or, or they fall in the water or they will die because it's so polluted. So it's part of this, uh, you know, um, um, whole debate over there with the, the problems that the, the population and the communities, they have so much uh, difficulties to 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 um, talk to each other. And the resentment and the distrust that is always at stake in these uh, spaces. So it's also, yeah, and they were demonstrating the whole time, you know, um, the sanitary landfill, you know, what, what is happening with the landfill. So it's, it's the idea that those, those wasteland are pieces of architecture that are created Distrust that are, are creating uh, very um, strong urban uh, battles. So coming back to the first one, uh, we tried to work once again with the ground using the mounds uh, and the polluted uh, of the ground of the incinerator to make a new topography in very uh, protected, uh, you know, uh, structures. And, and to create uh, uh, like a, a new hill. A new hill, because in this way you can create new um, uh, spaces without this polluted ground, putting it on the side, but always this, with the same idea that I mentioned before, is that you deal with the amount of material that you have. You, you're not thinking that what you find here is garbage and you can put outside. It's inside your, your plot that you have to deal with it. You have to find spe spatial conditions, spatial ideas to deal with it. I think the metropolitan condition and the, and the terrestrial condition for us now uh, imposes to find condition within our space. You cannot, you cannot think that it's, it's going, it's, of course, sometimes it's a good idea to do it because it can be useful outside for another one. But you can also think that what you can do inside as a special, spatial strategy. So it's also this, always the same idea that you can bring with new typologies of buildings and of uh, urban conditions like having this hill 
in front of you, like a hill that you can climb, you can go onto. It's it's a, like a new vertical garden. Of course, it's polluted under, so you cannot dig in, but you can walk, you can uh, see, you can. Um, it's something that uh, it's pleasant to live nearby. And the other condition, this one by one kilometer thing, crazy thing, is was about a long term strategy, like trying to give back the trust to this whole, you know. Uh, um, housing neighborhood of, you know, singular houses and uh, um, trying to uh, start with the edges, with small public spaces. So uh, having a work on the land, so taking out the pollution on small spaces, there you can give the trust and bring people to go there on a very small part because it costs a lot and doing so when you take the pollution out you will make new mounds here once again and then at some point you can open like the whole field but not to make a public space and uh, just to cross you know like you can ride or you can buy, uh, ride your bike or or run, or or make a promenade, but but you cannot dig into the the, the ground. So this was the whole uh, uh, strategy, and also the idea that with the woods, um, you can have an, an uh, industry of those woods and uh, um, trying to make um, some kind of public facilities where you could. Uh, offer to the very poor population around uh, uh, a, a shelter and a facility to repair uh, their houses every once in a while, namely because of the, the hurricanes that happens over there. And to finish, um, I, will, uh, I will try to talk about another book. Uh, this is the last book we've published, uh, another, maybe six of them. And this is the last one, it's called The Earth is an Architecture. Um, and it's, um, it's a book that, that um, is trying to, um, in a very, quite a, f a, a free um, way, is trying to tell a story about the world, the story about the architecture of the world, and tries to bring two notions together architecture and earth because I think we're in a time where I don't know if it's as strong here I would be very curious and, and, and happy to discuss it with you but in Europe it's so strong the idea that architecture and earth are in, in more than competition they are, they are becoming quite opposite like, for, for instance, my students, they tell me, do we have the right to build something anymore? Because if you build something, you're in this kind of carbon consumption and, and, and modernist or, or, let's say, capitalist or whatever you want system that is that they don't see any 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 solution and it's um it's quite a, a huge question i think that earth and and architecture are starting to be seen as opposite because i think i think that architecture and the earth can or must be thought together and that they, they have to bring a new story together. So the earth is an architecture, is an attempt to bring those two words together and also maybe to redefine architecture as well as to redefine the earth. To redefine the earth, you, would, uh, you can tell me, wow, who do you think you are? <laughs> it's a bit... It's, <laughs> It's a bit too much, right? 
Um, it's, it's more about using uh, the work that so many scientists have been doing for 20, 30 years now, you know, philosophers, um, life uh, sciences specialists, they are trying to understand that, well, the Earth is not anymore um, what for, for so many years we thought it was or we wanted to think it was. This, I would say, this decor, you know, this uh, thing that we that is ours, our property, and that we can use as we want. That we the, that will never um, react to what we're doing. So the Earth is not that. But this is not me saying it. This is all the scientists saying that now. The Earth, the Earth is reacting, and we know it now for fact reacting all the time. So the Earth is constantly evolving. And that this, on the opposite side, the architecture is not what we think it, we thought it was. It's not like is what is set on the ground. What architecture, architecture is not what we put on the Earth. And it would be disposable, like you, can, you can take it off. And nothing remains. It doesn't have any trace, any impact, any effect. No. Architecture, if architecture is the shaping of something, is putting something in shape, then I think architecture is the shaping of the world itself. So each time we're doing a, a small or a big action of architecture, we're shaping the earth. And I think it's quite important to try to, using the infrastructure concept, to find the way to bring those two notions, the earth and the architecture together, like to find ways to, to think them together. So yeah, this is images of the book and quotations and uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe when I talk about it like that, it, it seems very, theoretical and complex <laughs> I'm sorry if it's, 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 it's not like that because it, it's a story actually it's a story of in five um, five stories five chapters there are five continents um, that are trying to tell different kinds of infrastructures about lines about surfaces about volumes about um, 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 climate, about energy, so different kind of uh, architectural uh, questions and conditions. Um, also, to, to finish the, the process of doing this research, it's a five or six, six years research, and it's also not just a book, it's a, a very big installation, it's a, like a piece um, uh, work piece uh, that we did and that were, was asked to us by Hashim Sarkis, the former uh, um, curator of the, of the Venice Biennale uh, last year, the architectural Venice Biennale. And, and uh, so with the book, we proposed this uh, huge piece, which is a, a fictitious earth uh, that tells this story of the human artifacts and the geographic, uh, geological facts brought together, that they are trying to make this history together, that maybe they can be thought together, they can be looked at in the same, in the same way. Um, like thinking that architecture is geographical and architecture is the ground, architecture is the earth. So um, it's in a way of uh, the idea that um, we should uh, uh, try to, to uh, address uh, climate and terrestrial questions in a very active way when we do any piece of architecture. So it was in Venice. 
and now it's in Lille. Lille is a, um, a, a city in the north of France in the Museum of Fine Arts. And um, it's quite, uh, for us, it's quite interesting when they asked us for the piece and they told us, we want to put it in a room, a very special room, where you have this huge um, paintings from the 17th century, um, sorry, for the, from the 18th century, there are uh, Baroque paintings, um, and uh, uh, we want to put it in the same room in relation to religious paintings. Um, we thought, okay, the, the piece is going to open a new conversation, a new, a new part of his life, and uh, um, in a way it's a, a very Baroque piece also, with the colors, it was it's seven by seven meters by three and a half. It's all painted by hand, so it's like a, a huge piece um, that comes with a very little book. And I think I'm going to stop here. Oh, it's it's already quite long. Just to finish, that I, I I brought some some of the books that we did for the university. Um, this is the last one, so. If you want to take a look at it, or afterwards, it's going to be in the in the library. I'm happy to to bring them to the to the university, and I thank you very much. About how did you manage to? How did you find the space as an architect to discuss the topic of infrastructures and to discuss this topic of here? Because um, today it, it almost sounds really easy to speak, uh, to speak about geology, for example, or to speak about uh, traffic control. It was very nice to see. Uh, in your presentation, a, a new type of document emerged, a document that we hadn't seen uh, in the different events of the year. That it was this urban section, this urban that uh, didn't pay so much attention to how the buildings were, they were just slabs, uh, but paid attention to the width of the ground. And I was asking myself, how as an, as an architect you can be part of the discussion of the design and infrastructure? How how do you how do you start that, that conversation in a way? Well, um, I, I, I for, in our case, it started like I said with the ring road, and at some point, I think it's it's great when you're from somewhere to look at it very thoroughly. I mean, the, 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 the cities that were built with, with thousands of years or hundreds of years in, in terms of human artifacts sometimes, but thousands of years in terms of the architecture of the earth, they're so complex. And I think it takes time to look at them, to understand them. So a bit like we were discussing before with trying to describe and understand the buildings that are here. It takes time to understand the, 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 the structures that 
are not so visible, so easy to identify. And and we started like this. So we started, and like like I said, we. That's why I mentioned also Alexandre, Alexandre Terio from Bruter because, I mean, we did our, all our studies together, and and and, and uh, we started this group, and we were thirteen, thirteen during one year and a half. Just doing that, no classes anymore. Before it was like that, the thesis project. Now it's been reformed, so it's not like that anymore. But it was one year and a half on site. We took a space here and close to the ring road. And every day we were walking there, like we walked on the ring road, which is not allowed, huh? You could. We went on the ring road on foot as pedestrian, like you can die there every day. But I mean, it's a public space. So I have the right to go there. It's not because there's a sign that says no pedestrian. Uh, yeah, it's a public space. It belongs to the city of Paris. What's public belongs a little bit to me, no? So I have the right to go there, and I want to look at it. Because, you know, a, um, a highway is like a building. It is a building. It's, it's, it's structures. It's, um, it's, a program. it's a program. Yeah, coming back to this discussion, it's a program and it's a site. You know, the two major conditions for architecture, site and program. Well, the thing about infrastructure is that it's a program and a site, of course, together. But it's like it's creating a new site. So if you think about um, buildings as infrastructure, exactly what we've, we're, we're, you're looking at in the studio, the buildings that you're looking at, they're infrastructures, meaning you take them as, as sites. Their sites, not the sites that we were thinking about before, like, oh, this is a new um, part of, of the earth that I, we own and I, I can do whatever I want. No, it's a site in terms of the possibilities that uh, are created by the existing condition. So that's where we started. And, and uh, coming back to the sentence that we used before and that we, you were asking me with the students earlier, and I, I liked it very much, I like this sentence very much, and we used it with the ring road so much that I, I, I can tell you uh, again for, um, for those who were not there before, it's, it's um, a sentence by Gustave Flaubert, very, very, French, very famous French uh, uh, writer, who said, to, to find something beautiful, you just need to look at it for a long time. And I think for architects is very strong because uh, it talks about time. And we're, for people like us that are obsessed with space, uh, we have to put time in the, in the cooking, you know, <laughs> because it's just about time. The question, it's the question, when, when I talked about the question of our students, the question is, is it possible to, for, for the us to last a little bit more? Would it last? So this question is, is, is very, it's, it's a great question, I, I guess. So I think taking the time of understanding things that everybody or almost everybody thinks that, it, one, it's not architecture, Two, it's not public space. Three, it's impossible to understand. I think it's, I, I, I don't know, I would say responsibility. Maybe it's too much or I'm becoming a bit uh, like, uh, yeah, heavy. But I think we have some kind of responsibility to look at those, at those spaces, no? So we started like this. <laughs> <clears throat> I wrote it down because I wasn't like, Hi. So 
when we started the conference, um, I, I think you touched on it like a little later too, but you said that nothing is natural anymore, like if everything is artificial, we can say that like architecture is the shaping of the world, as you said. So I was thinking, do you think that the notion of infrastructure that you've been talking about like the whole conference is enough to like revert the situation that we've come to be in? Because you were talking about how your students uh, don't think they can like actually build anymore. So I think that like the question is like, I mean, the reason that we're in this crisis right now is because for centuries we've only had human necessities as like a focus. So my question was like, if you think it's, it's possible to have another or any kind of organisms, any type in question or like in our minds while we design and if it's possible or even like necessary, if you do like, um, do you think, like, do you have any, um, like, answers about how that can be done? I don't know, it was very long, but... I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if sometimes maybe the way I express myself and then maybe also it's the language when you speak not your mother language, it, it maybe... It, it sounds a little bit like I, I have the solution. I don't have the solution. And, 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 um, and, but, but in a way, I, I don't think we need to think in terms of solution. Like the big solution or, I think we need to think in terms of ideas and, and, and possibilities and, uh, and um, and dynamics. Um, what, what I was maybe in the end, maybe I, I didn't spend uh, too much time on this, but what I was trying to say also is that um, architecture is the 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 con the constantly evolving shaping of the world, and that's fundamental, constantly evolving. Like, it will never stop. Um, so, trying to, 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 to answer your question, I, 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 I'm sure that infrastructure concept is not enough at all. <laughs> it's, it's one that we're trying to work with and, and one that, we're, that, that we think is, is interesting and, and powerful. Um, and I think it's also one that maybe can help us relate more to the non, not only human realm. Like, for instance, this little uh, example of the spider, you know, but, but also like the river, you know, the, I, I always say that a river or a mountain is an infrastructure. You know, infrastructures are the 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 elements that shape the world, and um, human beings make infrastructures, but there are many other forces of the earth that make infrastructures. So th there's this. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Bruno Latour. But that's why it's the first uh, um, uh, quotation in our book, because I think it's quite clear. And for us as architects, it's difficult to be clear and precise, but uh, we have to, <laughs> but it's difficult. And, and uh, he's a great philosopher, and, and the quotation, let me read it to you, just to make mistakes. The earth is an assemble of living beings and matter which were made together, which cannot live separately, and from which man cannot escape. 
So I think one of the attempts, maybe of the ideas that you're asking for, is to try to, to think as architecture in terms of bringing all these forces together. The forces of the, the, the terrestrial uh, matters, what we have in the ground, the forces of the, the, the living species, and the human beings are among them, the forces of the climate, the forces of uh, um, the, the, the strength of the different parts of the, of the world that activates the world, like the energy, like the, the water, all of this. So, and I think for, it's not new. I mean, architecture has, has dealt with that all the time. We're just trying to continue to think about that, to add layers of, of thinking, of theory, of history into that. But let me be clear. I'm just an architect. And I don't want to, to, to pretend or to, to that, that I have any kind of solution. I just want to, to say that um, I think it's just incredible and incredibly great to have this kind of questions in front of us and, and have the most profound respect for the question that are raised by my students when they tell me, is it, is it even possible to build something? And I'm trying to, to think that it's possible, it's necessary, and if you don't do it, it's gonna be done anyways. Because you know, the rate of urbanization is growing, but like this. I mean, the, the hyperbolic trend from the industrial era, we're still in it, but in a hyperbolic way. So within 2015, so less than 30 years from now, 20 year, 28 years from now, there will be three times more in urban, urbanized land as today. Three times more. I'm not saying it, it's, uh, it's big studies. I mean, these studies, they, they, maybe they were like five years ago now, so maybe it should be, but it's studies from big uh, group of uh, universities, uh, of international universities together. So, and it's normal, it's going like that, all parts of the world. I mean, if you take a look at Asia, Africa, even South America, I mean, different parts of the world are in different conditions in relation to that, of course, but, but it's going like this. Energy consumption, material consumption, everything is going like this. So, and, and, and I'm not saying it to just once again tell, tell the people like, oh, we should be frightened about that, no. It's just, it's just a fact, like, like this building exists and, uh, and so I think we should be enthusiastic about the possibilities that architecture has to address those questions. And, and uh, historically architects are a bit, you know, like, you, you know this, um, there's a, a Dutch saying about architects, which is so mean, it says, don't ever trust an architect. If you, if, you, if you cross an architect, throw him a coin, he will take it. So mean. <laughs> so I think we have uh, much more to give, no? <laughs>
Well, the second power of the lecture. <laughs> uh, I would like to go back to part first, uh, which is also a uh, subject of point to me. Um, can you, some, somebody in your lecture, do you define public space as a place where everything could happen uh, as long as it's legal? Uh, <coughs> so start thinking about this idea of conflict, uh, conflict in public space. Not as a contingency or uh, collateral damage being in a public space, but instead, and maybe in more a uh, theoretical approach, like a key component or a condition for public space. Um, so, my question is how you um, manage this idea of conflict in your designs, so the, the law, the regulations of. of of human life doesn't work as a like a concept for architecture. I'm trying to think. Um, for instance, the your, your question make me think about. Um, a very special um, element of public spaces in, in France, actually, now. Um, a very special question and condition of, of public spaces is the security. I mean, it's not new, but it has taken a new aspect. And, it, and, and it, it's related to the attacks, several kinds of different attacks. And now we have a whole bunch of regulations. And um, it's quite difficult to think about public space in terms of uh, mainly of security, you know, because it's a bit uh, contradictory. Like you make a public space, but the thing that you have to think about in the first place is how to protect and and enclose in the in the certain way the public space um, at the same time i was thinking that once again it's um, it's an everlasting question because for instance if you take the the wall of paris it was a public space and it was a defensive space. It was made to prevent from the attacks, from the invaders. So the, the public space, it was not the public space the way we think about it now, of course. It was not made for demonstration, it was not made for uh, leisure or stuff like that, but it was a public space uh, you could you could you could go there. You could. Uh, it was also very controlled and military, but it was made for defense. You know the the Parisian Boulevard. One of the aspects of the creation of the boulevard was to prevent from the riots. From the so it was to be able to bring the the char. The army, yeah, the horses. Yeah, the, yeah, with the, the army, with the so it, it was possible to, to bring the army um, because it was large. You could you could uh, 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 circulate. Thank you. So it was the, you know this this idea that this great public space, worldly known. What I'm just saying. It's, I'm not saying it's, it's the key element or just the, the single element, but one of the strong elements of the creation of this public space is a defensive system. So once again, I think I, oh, you, I, think, I hope you won't get out by saying, well, he's, the guy is totally obsessed with infrastructure. Just talk about that. But, <laughs> yeah, tonight is so crazy, guys. <laughs> um, I think it's one of the aspects of the infrastructural capacity to bring together 
opposite conditions. Like, it's public and it's defensive. How do you deal with that? And I think it has uh, maybe spatial... Um, uh, um, consequences that are very precise on the sp on the size of the spaces on the logic of the topography on yeah stuff like that but I, I think it would be a great subject to go into because it's um, I mean I'm sorry it's a very partial answer to your question because it's one of the constraints or, or the, that I'm thinking about I don't know, is, is it answering your question in a way? Thank you. I don't know, I don't know how to see any question, but I just want you to make a point because I see that final quote from Ray Collins. The other weakness of manifesto is the inherent lack of evidence. And in some way, I think that uh, it's not a very interesting in your work that you are, uh, your practice is very uh, confirmed about the construction of evidence. You, know, like you want to publish very public, uh, public, um, public uh, projects. So, the, the, which are very in the opposite way of that uh, of the critical manifesto that is done in a laboratory yourself with the books, etc. You, you are with the, with the with foot in the in the mode. You are working with people, with infrastructure, with public money, and, and maybe if you can uh, expand your your thoughts about uh, that quote related to your your process. How you work in Europe? Yeah, it's uh, thank you for the question because it, I think it's it's quite true that um, um, you work with the reality, you work with the mud, to to, to use your word, you you work with the with the, um, what's 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 there, and. Um, what I like about working about uh, with what's there is that it's there. So if it's there, you have to deal with it. it if it's there, you you can grasp it, you know. So it's not theoretical or it's not abstract. I mean, you can have theoretical or abstract ideas about it, and, or abstract uh, design or process. Um, but it's not the same thing. It's there, so it's 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 not gonna vanish. It's 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 something that you can grasp. The other thing that I think is interesting about what's there and and this mud condition. It's that you need many people with you to understand it. So it's very collective. And many people that are, are not architects in the first place. Uh, because uh, I think also one of the uh, very strong uh, qualities of architecture or capacities of architecture is that it's it's a discipline that brings uh, sciences and specialists together. There are not so many disciplines that are able to do that. Design is, is about that. You know, like was said before, like so many people said, design is a problem-solving discipline, you know. It's, it's a bit a reduction, but because it's not about solving problem only, but but it's a, the capacity to solve problems in terms of bringing people and questions together, you know. And I love that about being able to tr try to implement 
and understands understand other people's concerns and ideas and 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 attempts, you know. I I don't think um, you know there are so many people that that this so many architects that despise you know because they have this difficulty with the I don't know the client or the users or because they're going against the way they see things. That that's one of the lessons of Place de la République, but also about any kind of. Uh, Uh, uses that you can imagine in, in any buildings that we're doing. It's that it's not used the way you were planning it. So it's it's great because it's creating a new reality, a new mud <laughs> for the, the guys behind or the guys after. So uh, we're working like this. It's very collective. I, I insist on that. It's very collective. I told you, I started in 13, like every day, 13 people reunion, you know, uh, general assembly. <laughs> After one year and a half, yeah, you need to <laughs> separate a little bit. But I think it's, it's a very collective uh, way of working is, is good. So it's not manifestos, it's, uh, it's trying to find evidences and trying to, to understand uh, the, the various layers of evidences. There are many evidences. So it's, it's also, the, 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 I think, the lessons of the, of the scientists. I don't think that, or let me rephrase, The lessons of the scientists are maybe not not um, just or, or above all their discoveries and what they tell us about like this is it and what we should look at it. It's more about the the process, you know, like trying to find evidences, trying to You know, the laboratory work. You're trying, you're looking for things. I think architects are like this. Well, I don't know if there are any other comments or questions from the audience. If not, I think uh, we can close today. Yeah, it was a pleasure to hear you. Thank you for your generosity and thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you.